Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you for the prayer that was just uh, spoken on the revelation of your word. How awesome you are. How gracious and how omnipotent you are in the name of Jesus. Um, how there are no words to really describe you, but the words that we do have is all we have. And we just really want to give you thanks for these life-changing lessons. They are so vital to our livelihood. Praise God. And we just give you so much praise and so uh, much thanksgiving for these lessons, for your spirit, for your um, anointing. Praise God in the name of Jesus. And so as we delve into these scriptures, praise God on the new creature, we just look to you to teach us today because it is you who teach praise god in the mighty name of jesus so we just give you praise and love you so much in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen. amen praise the lord okay we started off with thank you jesus mm, glory to god james praise god james 118 and you were saying uh, earlier that you know that these scriptures really have, you know, you've had them before, but they've really come alive to you. Praise mm -hmm. God. They've really um, done a great thing in your spirit. Oh, yes. Praise God. James. James 1 8. Here we go. All right. Hmm. For being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitating dubiously. James 1.18? Yeah, one eighteen. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, there I go. For being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitating dubious, irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. One eight. Why I just swoop to that, I don't know. Uh, but... Here, James is talking about a double-minded person, a double-minded person for being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitation, hesitating, dubiously, irresolute. He is unstable and unreliable, and he is uncertain about everything he thinks, everything he feels, and everything he decides. So we don't want to be double-minded. I don't know why the Lord is saying this, but praise God. Uh, we don't want to be double-minded. This kind of gives you really the definition of a two-minded person, praise God. You know, a double-minded person. We come across people that are double-minded, praise God. They're unstable, they're unreliable, and they're uncertain about everything, praise God. And this one scripture is really, okay, God, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Um, helps us understand and not to rely on a double-minded person and to be able to distinguish to be aware of a double-minded person and how to really um respond to a double-minded person praise god hallelujah uh so i think that james was really trying to talk about this so we can understand about a double-minded person and not rely on whether he's a pastor whether he's your friend whether he's your relative or whatever understand and be able to point a double-minded person out and respond to it according to the Holy Ghost, praise God. Um, in this new creature message, being a new creature, God teaches you how to discern spirits, praise God, how to discern spirits. Now in verse 18, he says, and it was of his own free will, praise God his own free will that he gave us birth as sons by his word of truth so that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures a sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself understand this my beloved brethren let every man be quick to hear and a ready listener slow to speak slow to take offense and slow to get angry praise god so he just did 118, I'm glad, Lord, you be doing it. praise God. Think about a double-minded person. Know that you are, praise God, a new creature. Know that, praise God, as it was his own free will that he gave you birth 
as sons by his word of truth so that you should be a kind of a first fruit, yes. a new species, praise God, yes. hallelujah, of his creatures, a sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. And I like a 19, he says, understand this. You know how we say, understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, and slow to take offense and to get angry. In other words, praise God. In other words, know a double-minded person. Know that you have been born again. Know that, praise God, he has given you, praise God, his own free will to be his sons, praise God, and to be first fruits, to understand, praise God, hallelujah, the things of which he gives you in life to understand and know and distinguish. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So being a new creature, God gives you, praise God, hallelujah, um, how can I say, he gives you the awareness of what's surrounding you. When you become a new creature, you begin to see things differently. You are a first fruits of a new species. You're not like everybody else, praise God. Hallelujah, he is able to show you to distinguish the people around you that are double-minded. The people, praise God, who around you are double-minded that don't mean you no good, that Praise God to distinguish, praise God, how to respond to them, to distinguish them and how to respond to them. And then being a, what does he say? A ready listener, to listen to him, to listen to what he is giving you in responding to these things. When somebody gets angry, praise God, what did he say? Be a ready listener, slow to speak. Be slow to speak, slow to take offense and get angry. All right, he's showing you how to respond. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You know how to swoop these together. How to respond to a double-minded person. How to respond to if somebody pisses you off. Glory to God. Be a ready listener. You know you should be listening to what people are saying. And then we go back again to remember you are a new creature in Christ. Yes, remember that you are a new species. You are set apart. For the use of God. You are set apart for the relationship of God. You are set apart, consecrated, and made holy by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, God, you you know you hallelujah. I receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go to Second Corinthians chapter five. here and I really like this commentary with this because the back of it you read the back mm -hmm. where it showed you the difference you know showed you what is what mm -hmm. isn't exactly it was very good very very good praise the Lord all right Let me get to that Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse fifteen, five fifteen. And he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. Consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view in terms of natural standards of value. No. Even though we once did estimate Christ from a human viewpoint and as a man, yet now we have such knowledge of him that we know him no longer in terms of the flesh. That was good. Oh, yeah. I like the first part and the second part. This really had changed my life. I kind of looked at things differently when I read this because it says in 15, and he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but 
to and for him who died and was raised again for our sake or for their sake. And I say our sake, you know, um, who died and was raised again for their sake. Praise God. So he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves. That's something I believe that everyone should take in, be serious about. Know that you have to sacrifice in the lesson earlier today on the relationship, the sacrifice that you make of your will for God's will, you know, and coming into the place of where you die to yourself. Praise God. And you no longer live for you. You live for God. And, and it was, we, I think we were in, uh, we were talking about Paul and Paul said it was his, his purpose and his, his aim to know Christ, to know him. So if you no longer live to and for yourself, you live to and for Christ, to know him, to really get to know him, to have a personal, intimate race relationship with him. And we got into relationships, and it was just an awesome thing about how to make babies, praise God, in relationship. So it's like you live no longer to and for yourself, but to and for him who died and was raised again for your sake. And it says, consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view. And when it says human point of view, you're not looking at people from a human point of view, from your carnal nature. You are allowing the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to give you insight into that person, place, or thing, or circumstance. And you don't look at anyone from a purely human point of view. You don't look at them because they're cute, because they dress nice, or because they talk good. You look unto their spirit. So you have to allow God, praise God, to show you just who you're talking to. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to the person? Are you talking to the spirit? And God can distinguish that. So God said, don't look at people from a human point of view. What they look like, how they talk. Look at them from a spiritual point of view. That's why it says that consequently from now on, we estimate and regard no one, it says, from a purely human point of view. In terms of natural standards of value. No, even though we once did estimate Christ from a human point of view as he walked the earth, praise God, as a man. Yet now we have such knowledge of him. You're supposed to have such knowledge of him, praise God, that we know him no longer in terms of the flesh. Now we got to go deeper. We got to go deeper into who Christ is, praise God. We got to go deeper on the inside so that it can be seen on the outside, praise God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right? So therefore, if any person is engrafted, I like that word the Amplified Bible says. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he's a new creation. He's a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral, the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Do you see that? The old previous moral morals or standards set by the church set by society praise god and spiritual condition has passed away behold the fresh and new has come christ is the fresh he is the new and the what does this song say they, his mercy and grace is new every morning great is his faithfulness yeah. praise god He's new. He's new. He's new every morning. Praise God. He's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Behold, the fresh and new has come. So that's how you have to look at yourself as being a new creature. As being a new creature, praise God, you are new. You are a totally new species. You are nothing like anybody else. You are like what God created you to be and what he continues to make you to be more and more like him. In spirit first. And then expressing it in the natural. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank you Jesus. Glory to God. Therefore if any person is engrafted. Born again. Saved. Sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in, speaking in tongues. 
in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation. And the reason why I say uh, 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 speaking in tongues, praise God, I emphasize that only because that is a witness of him being on the inside of you. Praise God. Glory to God. So the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Now the commentary says, and it's kind of hard to read, but I love it. You, you got all of it, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. The term new, new nature refers to the spiritual transformation that occurs in the inner man when a person believes in Christ as Savior. The Christian is not a new man as opposite of the old man, thank you, that he was before. He became a Christian. The concept of newness may be traced to an important choice between two Greek words, both meaning new. One word means new in the same of the renovation, praise God, uh, repair, and the other in the sense of a fresh existence. It is the latter fresh existence that is used to describe the Christian. He is not the old man renovated or refreshed. He is a brand new man with a new family, a new secret, a new, excuse me, a new set of values, a new motivation, and new possessions. Because I like that because everything's new. Praise God. And you have to look like this. You have to see this. And when you're taught this, you're able to receive it and look at it in a different perspective. Praise God. So the old man is still present in the new life and expresses himself in corruptive deeds such as lying, praise God, um, uh, uh, such as lying, praise God. And it says here, I put on a new suit of clothes, praise God. In other words, the new nature must be, uh, what does it say? cultivated. Thank you, Jesus. So the new nature must be cultivated or nurtured by spiritual decisiveness to grow in Christ. We must not revert to putting on the old suit of the former life. Rather, we must continue to grow in this new life. The message of the new nature is a message of supreme hope the Spirit of God can accomplish accomplish, praise God, a life changing transformation for all who will only believe in Christ. Amen. And I thank God for being able to read this because it's difficult to read. You were able to get it, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, this, this commentary came from a friend of mine. I really loved it and uh, put it in this message. And I loved it. I don't know what Bible was, was in, what commentary, but it's an awesome thing. But I had gotten this, which I love this. And this will help you. But to put off the old man and put on the new man and it gives you scripture you know what it says when you put off the lack of love put on love when you put off judging you let God search your heart when you put off bitterness you uh, put on tender hearted and forgiving when you put off unforgiving an unforgiving spirit you put on a forgiving spirit when you put off selfishness you put on self-denial when you put off pride you put on humility when you put off boasting you put off esteeming others praise God when you put off stubbornness you put on brokenness when you put off disrespect for authority you put on honor authority when you put off rebellion you put on submission when you put off disobedience when you put off disobedience you put on obedience when you put off impatience you put on patience when you put off ungratefulness you put on gratefulness when you put off covetousness you put on contentment when you put off discontent you put on contentment when you put off murmuring and complaining you put on praise when you put off irritation to others you put on preferring in love when you put off jealousy, you put on trust. When you put off strife and contention, you put on peace. When you put off re retaliation, getting even, you put on return good for evil. When you put off losing your temper, you put on self-control. When you put off anger, you put on self-control. When you put off wrath, you put on a soft answer. 
when you put off easily irritated, you put on not easily provoked. When you put on hatred, put off hatred, you put on love. When you put off murder, you put on love. When you put off gossip, you put on edifying speech. When you put off evil speaking, you put on a good report. When you put off critical a critical spirit, you put on kindness. When you put off lying, you put on speak the truth. When you put off profanity, you put on a pure speech. When you put off idle words, you put on a bridal tongue. When you put off wrong motives, you put on spiritual motives or right motives. When you put off evil thoughts, you put on pure thoughts. When you put off complacency, complacency, you put on zeal, being complacent. When you put off laziness, you put on diligence. And when you put off softness, not doing your best, you put on wholeheartedness. wholeheartedness. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this is very good to kind of check yourself. It's a checklist, yeah. Yes, it is. To check and see where you're at. Praise God. This is good. Thank you, Jesus. This is my favorite, Romans 6, because this really, uh, Romans 6, 3, this really helps you understand what you need to do and how you need to think. Praise God, it's being buried with Christ. And I really don't think that people that read this uh, really get it and begin to, to really um, test themselves with it or examine themselves with this scripture. I mean, when you read this scripture, what did you think about it, Steph? When you started reading this, uh, Romans 6, verse 3, where it talks about you got to bury yourself, where it says you are, because um, Paul was talking to the Romans, praise God, and, um, you know, they were asking him some questions about it. He says, what shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace or favor or mercy may multiply and overflow? And so Paul says, certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? So they were asking him questions about, you know, um, sin. And he told them, he said, are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So he was really giving them a lesson about dying to self praise God. Back in that day, praise God, I don't think they really, really understood it, but he asked them, were you ignorant of the fact? In other words, when you got saved, when you were saved from hell or saved from death, praise God, you were buried with Christ. You were buried with his crucifixion. He died, you have to die. You know, so it says we are, we were buried therefore with him by the baptism into death death to your will praise god so that just as christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the father so we too might habitually live and behave in the newness of life so we're talking about the new creature so if you're a new creature you're special praise god you're different from everybody else well you got to die the same death that jesus did you ain't got to be nailed to the cross but you got to nail your will to the cross you got to nail yourself to the cross praise god what you want to do, how you want to do it. That needs to be nailed to the cross so that Christ can fill you up to overflowing with himself. He's not going to take away your personality because he gave you that. But you are going to have to, you know, be redeveloped in Christ. Praise God. So if we have become one with him by sharing a death of his, verse 4, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life that is lived for God. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is an instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. So this changed my life right here. Verse 7. For when a man dies, he is freed, he is loose, delivered from the power of sin among men. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So you can't resurrect unless you die. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So you die to yourself and then you're resurrected a new creature. You're resurrected a new way of thinking. 
you're resurrected, praise God, a new way of doing things, praise God, hallelujah, for when a man dies, he is freed, he's loose, he's delivered from the power of sin among men, now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, because we know that Christ, the anointed one being once raised from the dead, will never die again, death no longer has power over him, death no longer has power over him, praise God. So we go back to this. We were buried, therefore, with him. Ask yourself, have you been buried with Christ? Have you, uh, you know, put your will up on the cross? Are you willing to do that? That's the key right there. Praise God. Are you willing to do it? Are you buried with him? By the baptism into death. Because when you said, yes, I want to be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah glory to God, that means that you no longer are your own. And I'd rather be like that. I really would rather be like that. So we know, verse 6, that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross. Do you know that? So these are questions you need to ask yourself. All of this is examining yourself and see where you measure up to. And you know, if you ain't made it to some of the things, it's okay. Just strive for that. Strive. For that, you know, and seven, for when a man dies, he is freed, he's loose, he's delivered from the power of sin. So when you dead, praise God, hallelujah, you're released from it. And then you are brought alive by the resurrection power of God Amen. into a new life, praise God, a new, again, way of thinking, acting, and being, praise God, in the name of Jesus. So verse 10 says, for by the death he died, he died to sin, ending his relationship to it once and for all. And the life that he lives, he's living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Even so, consider yourselves also dead to sin and your relation to it broken, but alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Jesus Christ. Let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal short-lived perishable bodies to make you yield to its cravings and be subject to its lust and evil passions. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments or tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties, meaning your mind, to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. So you present your mind and your body to God. Amen. Sacrifice it, Amen. praise God. Sacrifice your will. Amen. You know, say, God, I, 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 got, I need a new way of thinking. I want to think out of your mind. What did you say? The word says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. These scriptures should help you. Find your way. Praise God. He said, I am a, a, a lamp to your feet. Thank you, Lord. And a light to your path. And these words, which are alive, are a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. They show you which way to go. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. The scripture I like, with you know. Scripture I like this. That's my favorite one. This is this Romans six is my favorite, one of my favorites. Let's just say, you know, we're gonna go to. A, I love this with Oswald Chambers. We were buried with him, and just as Christ was raised from the dead, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. We should walk in the newness of life. Now Oswald Chambers says, uh, no one experiences complete sanctification without going through a white funeral, the burial of the old life. If there has never been this crucial moment of change through death, sanctification will never be more than an elusive dream. There must be a white funeral, a death, with only one resurrection, a resurrection into the life of Jesus Christ. Nothing can defeat a life like this. It has oneness with God for only one purpose, to be a witness for him. Have you really come to your last days? You have often come to them in your mind, but have you really experienced them? You cannot die or go to your funeral in a mood of excitement. Death means you stop being. 
You must agree with God and stop being the intensely striving kind of Christian you have been. We avoid the cemetery and the continual, continually refuse and continually refuse our own death. It will not happen by striving, but by yielding to that death. Praise God. Yielding to God, giving it up. Praise God. It will not happen by striving, but by yielding to death. It is dying, being baptized into his death. Praise God. Because he gave up his own will and went up on the cross and got nailed to the cross and shed his blood for us. I mean, really. So, I mean, if he can do that, what is wrong with you? You can't give up your will, the things that you want to do, the things that you think that you want to do, Amen. that you think are right, praise God, and not really bringing them to the throne of God and saying, is this the right thing to do? Amen. Praise God. So it says, have you had your white funeral? Or are you, I like this, or are you piously deceiving your own soul? Has there been a point in your life which you now mark as your last day? Is there a place in your life to which you go back in remembering with humility and overwhelming gratitude so that you can honestly proclaim, yes, it was then at my white funeral that I made an agreement with God and I told him, I give up my life to you. Just like Jesus said, I give up my life. I commit my spirit unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then he took his last breath and he was gone. And that's what we got to do. Give up our spirit to God. Let him handle it. Praise God. This is the will of God. Your sanctification. Once you truly realize this is God's will, you will enter into the process of sanctification as a natural response. Are you willing to experience that white funeral now? Will you agree with him that this is your last day on earth? The moment of agreement depends on, on you. you. Yes, it does. What do you want to do? Praise Amen. God. This is John Ogilvy. I like this. I like all of these. It's just they're just the bomb. Praise God. Born again to hope. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we should also be shall live with him. Praise God. Romans 6 8. Paul presses on in our understanding and experience of the new birth. He vividly pictures the before and after condition of our lives. Prior to being born again, we are dead in an old nature. The key to the whole passage is in the powerful verse we have selected as our key verse for today. We are born again when we die with Christ and are resurrected to a new life in him. Now, throughout his epistles, Paul tells us about the new birth as a death and resurrection experience. We die to ourselves, our plan, our purposes, our presuppositions. By the power of God, we are raised up to a new life. How is your life radically different because of this experience? A sure sign of our rebirth is lively hope. That's the triumphant note of Peter about the born again experience. Our own present resurrection from death of self to a deathless life gives us courage to face life's problems and disappointments with the sure conviction that our Lord will intervene and infuse his power in our times of need. We can face anything with that assurance. Hope provides patience. We are able to take the long view of things. The shortness of time and the length of eternity gives us patience with the trifles of life. A born again person knows he belongs to Christ. His nature is being reproduced in him. God's nature, I'll say, is being reproduced in him. Would the people around you say that your rebirth had made you a contagiously hopeful person? That was good. Yes, good very good. I mean, ask yourself that. Praise God. John Ogilvy, praise God. And John Ogilvy, again, our old attitudes in a new life. Our old attitudes in a new life. Praise God. This is verse 13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from and dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So he says, therefore, yesterday we began our thinking about his stirring word of transition and implication. Today's scripture again spells out a joyful truth, which is possible because of what 
has gone before. Paul has carefully declined or delineated what God has done in Jesus Christ to liberate man from the power of sin. So the power of evil has been defeated. And now man is able to live a new and exciting life in fellowship with God. If you choose to do so, praise God. It's up to you what you choose to do. But God has made it so that you can make that choice, praise God. You can fellowship with him. And those that have accepted him can fellowship with him. Therefore, if it is true, why do you live as if it uh, were not true when you were born again, when you said yes to God? And how come you live in a different way? How come you're not striving to know him, to know his ways instead of your own? So if this is true, why do you live as if it were not true? Why go on living with old attitudes, behavior, and problems if God has truly forgiven, truly accepted, and truly empowered you for a different kind of life? Why continue living in the old man? Amen. In the light of all that we believe, why are we living the way we do in frustration, anxiety, and fear? How easy it is to acknowledge the fantastic truth of the gospel and go on living the way we did before we believed. It was true for us. Praise God. We are like prisoners who find it difficult to believe that we have been pardoned, because we have been pardoned, and are free to live as released free men and women of God. We have the choice. We become what we concentrate on. I read earlier today about what is your focus? Your focus should be heaven, no matter what. Your focus should be heaven in everything that you do, whether you have a ministry, whether you know you um, are um, ministering to someone, whatever God has called you to do, your focus should be heaven. I'm doing this because God asked me to do it. He wants me to do it. He chose me to do it. And this brings me in good fellowship with him. And I'm looking to go to heaven. I'm looking to go to heaven. So I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it like he wants to have it done. And if I do it like he wants to have it done, then he's pleased with me. And that's why I'm doing it. Not because I want to, to glorify myself, but I want him to say, well, good my a faithful servant praise God thank you Jesus so are we living the way we do in frustration anxiety and fear how easy is it to acknowledge the fantastic truth of the gospel and go on living the way we did before we believe it was true for us we are prisoners who find it difficult to believe that we have been pardoned and are free to live as released men and women of God we have the choice we become what we concentrate on. We become the kind of person we envision. Our picture of life will be fulfilled in action and deed. What if we accepted the true picture of our life as under God's control and as an extension of his love? How would we act if we truly believed we were no longer instruments of sin, but instruments of God's righteousness? Hold that picture. And that's exactly what you will find you are able to do. So oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, these um, these are just so wonderful to, you know, really meditate on. Praise God. Really meditate on and then examine yourself and see where you're at. And then strive to be the, the things that you're not there yet. Just strive to do better. To get there. Praise God. So, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. How was it good for you? I mean, how, how did it do for you? Good. Excellent. I loved it. <laughs> I told you before we started, you know, what it gave me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm asking you again. Oh. Amen. Revelation, illumination, it got out of my head finally and into my spirit. Mm -hmm. I understand more clearly about a new creation was a total new species of Amen. human being and that gave me a whole different outlook on my life mm -hmm. on everything in life every word that we read today that we looked at today even in the commentary applied Amen. And now it went in my spirit, and it didn't stay in my head. Amen. Amen. And see, that's what I wanted to say again, mm -hmm. because it can you can read this and go over it, 
and it's in your mind, but it's not in your spirit. And so I want these lessons to get in your spirit, that you will meditate on them, take notes, praise God. One of my friends says she took notes on it, and that's really good. Take notes on it and let it minister to your spirit. Jesus said his words are spirit and, and they are life. That's right. This is life word. This mm. is word for my life. Amen. Our lives depend on his word. Yes, it does. We can't make it without it. That's right. So, yeah, take notes. Like you said, reread, highlight, mm -hmm. everything we can do. Yes. Pray, meditate on it. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it it's been amazing for me to get this. So I hope that whoever listens to this that you take you know notes that you read it over again take it and play it over again because this is for you this is for the students here but this is for you also this is why we have you know it on video so that you could get this word for yourself and I just thank you and thank God for you thank God for my my sister over here praise God and uh, God bless you and keep you till next time all right God bless bye-bye